In the world of sports, there are many things that differ and many things that stay the same. While the type of equipment used may differ, the type of game is usually two teams running back and forth trying to score on the other person's side. This can also be applied to scoring systems, as they will differ from sport to sport, but they remain generally consistent in their own sport. And then there's tennis, where if you look up this question on Google, the first result you'll likely get relating to it is, why does tennis score that way? Which gives you a good indication of how stupid this scoring system is. Now for those that haven't played Wii Sports, let me break this scoring system down for you. Each side starts at love, which is zero, one point gets you to 15, a second point gets you to 30, a third point gets you to 40, and a fourth point wins you the game. However, in order to win the game, you have to win by two points, which means that if both sides have 40 points, they have to enter a deuce, which I like to call getting deuced on. So what then has to happen is one side has to get one point to get an advantage, then a second point to win, but if the other side gets a point after the other side has gotten a point to get the advantage, then they get an advantage as well, so you go back to getting deuced on. But you see, winning the game isn't enough. You have to win six games, and you have to have two game wins ahead of your opponent in a certain set. And there are three or five sets depending on the tennis event that you're playing at. And if you just so happen to get a 6-0 in one set, you get what is called a bagel. Okay. Why does tennis have a weird scoring system? This is the imponderable, where we answer the questions you've never asked. Now before I say anything, I should mention that there's been no confirmed reason for the scoring system, and everything I'm about to say is just theories. So starting off with why zero is called love, it's been said that since the 1700s, love has been used as a word to refer to nothing, which is pretty funny in hindsight. However, the phrase neither for love nor money has also been related to it due to the wagering aspect of tennis, implying that someone with love didn't have money. That's right. If you're in love, you are nothing and broke. Unfortunately, the most popular reason is also the dumbest reason, as it is said that love is derived from the French word luf, which is French for egg, and an egg looks like a zero. This would be like if someone jumped in a circle and I said they were jumping like an onion ring. Now this theory has been argued against since in the early days of tennis they didn't actually write down scores so there'd be no point of having a visual cue for zero. And on top of that, according to sports historian and linguist Heiner Gilmeister, the word luf actually wouldn't be modified into English to say love. It would instead be modified to say leaf, which uh, does make some sense. Another theory is that it's derived from the Dutch word luf, which means honor, implying that the people competing in the match see this as a battle, because you know in tennis, we're talking about war here. Moving on to the actual points, this is where it gets even more stupid, because at first it goes up by 15, another 15, then 10, and then because 60 is seen as the final point of the game, it goes up by 20. It wasn't always this way though, as the first iteration of tennis, called court tennis, or if you want to get snobby about it, Real tennis used 45 instead of 40 in the scoring. Now one of the more common reasons for the scoring system is that it is based off of the minutes of a clock, specifically if you divide it into quarters. However, once the deuce rule came into play, which I can only assume was because they wanted to have a decisive win instead of a close call, they decided to bring the 45 down to 40 so that in an advantage it would go up to 50 and then the win would be 60. Though it should be mentioned that this theory has some pushback to it due to the fact that the minute hand on a clock wasn't invented until the late 1500s and wasn't even common until much later, all the while the scoring system was in place way before that. An alternative to this theory involves the time when Europeans were greatly obsessed with astronomy, with one of the factors of it being the sextant, which is one-sixth of a circle. And I know damn well you thought it was something sexual, you dirty mutt, but basically they based the entire scoring system around the concept of a sextant. 60 points a game would equal 60 degrees, which is one-sixth of a circle, 15 points for 4 points would equal 60 eventually, and back in the olden days of tennis, it was 6 games of 4 sets, and so that would equal 24 points overall, meaning that at the end, whoever gets 24 times 15 points would equal 360 degrees, which is a circle I want to die. Eventually though, court tennis extended the amount of sets to 6, and apparently, the reason why 45 was changed to 40 was because it was easier to hear 40 when it was announced as a score. Because, I guess, people deaf or something. Anyway, that's all fine and good, but we are still talking about court tennis after all. We're not talking about the modern version of tennis that was originally devised by Walter Clopton Wingfield back in the 1860s as a distraction for his guests before they were preparing to shoot pheasants. As this version of tennis became locally popular, the All England Croquet Club woke up one day and realized, oh shit, 
No one plays croquet anymore! And so they adopted Wingfield's version of tennis for their own fields, and eventually became the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club, despite the fact their logo only has tennis stuff on it and doesn't have any croquet stuff on it. It goes to show how much croquet matters in this world. Now, due to the infancy of lawn tennis at the time, it was really hard to identify what the rules are since there wasn't any official association for the game. Naturally, the scoring system would be one of the things that would differ depending on where you were. Some clubs would actually do this thing where if you score on the other person's side, you get one point, then two points, then three points. But honestly, if you think about it, I don't think that'll ever catch on. There was also this thing called the World Pro Championship League, which decided it would be a smart idea to use the table tennis scoring system, where matches go up to 21 points, and they eventually folded, so that went well. But eventually, as associations for lawn tennis did become more of a thing, they just decided, screw it, let's adopt the court tennis scoring system, and now we have to live with it. And honestly, I really feel like I should have just made that What Causes Headaches video solely about the tennis scoring system, because my god, this was really hard to make. So with all that being said, why does tennis have a weird scoring system? Because Europeans weird.